Welcome to Two Projects. In this video, we are going to explain the project, a machine learning sentiment analysis on monkeypox outbreak, an extensive data set to show the polarity of public opinion from Twitter tweets. Introduction The project focuses on conducting a comprehensive sentiment analysis on Twitter regarding the monkeypox outbreak. By leveraging natural language processing that is NLP techniques and machine learning algorithms, the project aims to decipher the sentiments expressed by individuals on social media, specifically Twitter, about the monkeypox disease. The project holds significance by providing valuable insights into how the public perceives infectious diseases, particularly monkeypox. In an era dominated by social media as a primary information source, understanding public sentiment is essential for government officials and policymakers to devise effective strategies for disease control. Moreover, the project highlights the role of social media in monitoring public health concerns. The project directly benefits government and policymakers by offering a data-driven understanding of public sentiments surrounding monkeypox. This information can inform the development of targeted policies and mitigation strategies. Additionally, the project contributes to the field of natural language processing and sentiment analysis, showcasing the potential applications of these techniques in public health research. Ultimately, the broader population stands to benefit from more informed and effective measures aimed at addressing infectious diseases. Object of the project so, as I mentioned earlier, the objective is to conduct an examination of tweets pertaining to the monkeypox outbreak on Twitter. And the aim is to utilize natural language processing tools, specifically Vader and text blob, to categorize tweets into positive, negative, or neutral sentiments. This aims to quantify and understand the prevailing emotional tone in discussions related to monkeypox. And we aim to gain insights into how the public perceives the monkeypox outbreak by exploring discussions, views, and emotions on social media. This involves analyzing the potential impact of social media content on public perception with a focus on identifying factors that may contribute to panic or the spread of misinformation. And the goal is to provide decision makers, including government officials and health authorities, with a comprehensive understanding of public sentiments surrounding monkeypox. The aim is to offer valuable insights that can aid in the formulation of effective health policies and mitigation strategies, ultimately assisting in controlling the spread of the disease. The aim also includes to design, develop, and evaluate classification models using advanced techniques like stemming, lemmatization, and vectorization methods such as count vectorization and TF-IDF. The objective is to create a reliable framework for sentiment classification. The performance assessment of these models is crucial for identifying the most accurate one, ensuring trustworthy insights into public health sentiments. Requirements needed to execute this project are Software requirements. Software needed is Anaconda. Primary language used is Python. Frontend framework used is Flask. Backend framework used is Jupyter Notebook. Database used is SQLite 3. And frontend technologies used are HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap 4. Hardware requirements needed are Operating system of Windows. Processor of i5 and above. RAM of 8GB and above and hard disk of 25 GB and above. Now we'll discuss the working modules of law of work. So the first step is important required packages. So the project begins by importing essential libraries, including Pandas and NumPy for data manipulation, SKLearn for machine learning tools, and NLTK for natural language processing tasks. These packages lay the foundation for subsequent data exploration and model development. The second step is exploring the data set. So here, the monkeypox data set is examined to understand its structure, features, and distribution. This step involves checking for missing values, exploring data types, and gaining an overall understanding of the information available. A thorough exploration ensures the data set suitability for sentiment analysis. The third step is visualization. So visualizations are created to provide a snapshot of the data set and offer insights into the most common words and sentiments expressed. Sample outcomes and word clouds help in understanding the prevalent themes and sentiments related to the monkeypox outbreak on Twitter. The next step is data processing. 
In this step, the raw text data undergoes several pre-processing steps to enhance its suitability for machine learning models. This includes removing URLs and special characters, eliminating punctuation, stop words, and normalizing the text. Additional techniques such as lemmatization and stemming are applied to further refine the data. And tokenization breaks down the text into individual words, preparing it for feature extraction. The next step is feature extraction. So in this step, two feature extraction techniques, count vectorizer and TF-IDF vectorizer are employed to convert the text data into numerical format. So count vectorizer tallies word frequencies in documents, creating a matrix of counts. In contrast, TF-IDF vectorizer weighs word importance by considering term frequency and inverse document frequency, producing a matrix that reflects a term significance in a document and across the entire data set. These techniques are vital for converting text into numerical data for machine learning applications. The next step is feature selection. So feature selection is performed to identify the most relevant features for sentiment analysis. The next step is train and test split. Here, the data set is split into training and testing sets, ensuring the models are trained on one subset and evaluated on another to assess generalizability. The next step is training and building the model. So in this step, we have used both text blob and weighted sentiment analysis tools in this project. So text blog, a Python library, assigns polarity scores to text for quick assessments of positive, negative, or neutral sentiments. Wader, part of NLTK, excels in social media sentiment analysis, providing compound scores that consider intensity and nuances in informal language. The difference lies in their approaches, with text blob being versatile and easy to use, and Wader tailored for social media nuances. Various classifiers, including logistic regression, SVM, random forest, etc., are implemented using both count vectorizer and TF-IDF vectorizer in conjunction with text blob and weighted sentiment analysis techniques. So the goal is to construct and assess models comparing the performance across different machine learning algorithms and vectorization methods. And in the next step, as an extension, a stacking classifier is applied, combining predictions from multiple individual models to enhance the overall predictive accuracy. This hybrid model leverages the strengths of different classifiers to produce a more robust sentiment analysis. And as an extension, again, a user-friendly frontend is developed using the Flask framework, allowing users to input text for sentiment analysis. The system includes user authentication through SQLite for secure signup and sign-in processes. So after signing in, the user provides input as text. So this undergoes pre-processing similar to the training data, ensuring consistency. The pre-trained model is then used to predict sentiment based on the user's input, providing real-time insights. And latent directlet allocation, that is LDA, is applied for topic modeling, revealing underlying themes and topics within the data set. This step enhances the understanding of the content and discussion surrounding the monkeypox outbreak on Twitter. And the final sentiment analysis results, topic modeling insights, and model predictions are displayed through the front-end interface. This user-friendly presentation enables decision makers to grasp public sentiments easily and informs health policies effectively. Now we'll understand about the machine learning algorithms used. The first one is logistic regression. Logistic regression is a linear classification algorithm that models the probability of an instance belonging to a particular class. It employs the logistic function to map predicted values into a probability range 0 to 1. In this project, logistic regression is suitable for binary sentiment classification tasks, providing probabilities of positive or negative sentiments based on extracted features. The next algorithm built is support vector machine that is SVM. SVM is a versatile algorithm for classification and regression tasks. It works by finding the hyperplane that best separates data points of different classes in a high-dimensional space. SVM is effective in capturing complex relationships in data and is chosen for its ability to handle non-linear decision boundaries in sentiment analysis, contributing to non-sentiment predictions. The next one is Random Forest. Random Forest is an ensemble learning method that constructs a multitude of decision trees and merges their outputs. Each tree contributes to the final prediction, enhancing accuracy and reducing overfitting. 
In this project, Random Forest is employed for its robustness and capability to handle diverse features, improving sentiment classification performance. The next algorithm built is multi-layer perceptron that is MLP. MLP is a type of artificial neural network with multiple layers of interconnected nodes. It excels in capturing complex patterns in data. For sentiment analysis, MLP can learn intricate relationships between words and sentiments, providing a sophisticated model for understanding the nuanced language used in social media discussions on the monkeypox outbreak. The next one is Nybase. Nybase is a probabilistic classification algorithm based on Bayes theorem. Despite its simplicity, it performs well in text classification tasks. Nybase assumes independence between features, making it efficient for sentiment analysis, where the presence or absence of specific words contributes to sentiment prediction. It is chosen for its speed and effectiveness in processing textual data. The next algorithm built is XGBoost. XGBoost is an optimized gradient boosting algorithm known for its speed and performance. It sequentially builds multiple weak learners to create a strong predictive model. In this project, XGBoost is utilized for its ability to handle imbalanced data sets and achieve high accuracy in sentiment analysis, contributing to reliable predictions. And the last algorithm built is K-nearest neighbors, that is KNN. KNN is a simple yet effective algorithm that classifies data points based on the majority class of their nearest neighbors. In sentiment analysis, KNN is employed for its simplicity and adaptability to varying data distributions, making it a suitable choice for exploring patterns in the monkeypox related Twitter data. Now we'll see the performance metrics comparison graphs of the algorithms built using text blob sentiment analysis technique. So this is the horizontal bar graph comparing accuracies of different algorithms. In this graph on x-axis, I have accuracy scores and on y-axis, I have algorithm names. So we can see these are all the machine learning algorithms built using features extracted from TF-IDF vectorizer. And these are the machine learning algorithms built using the features extracted from count vectorizer. So Accuracy measures the overall correctness of predictions showing the percentage of correctly classified instances. This is precision scores comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have precision scores and on y-axis, I have algorithm names. Precision measures the accuracy of positive predictions indicating how many predicted positives were actually correct. This is recall scores comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have recall scores and on y-axis, I have algorithm names. Recall measures the ability to identify all relevant instances showing how many actual positives were correctly predicted. And this is F1 scores comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis, I have F1 scores and on y-axis, I have algorithm names. F1 score combines precision and recall into a single metric balancing accuracy and completeness in predictions. So these are the performance metrics comparison graph of the algorithms built using Vader sentiment analysis technique. So the algorithm which is best performing in all the performance metrics will be used for predictions. Execution of the project. To execute this project, first we need to open the code folder which contains the project source code files. So this is Archie folder in which I have tweets data set with class labels on which we will train the models. This is static folder. This folder consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap. This is templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc., which represent different pages of the website. This is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to frontend logic. It includes code data in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database, and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML pages. These are model files which contain algorithm information. These files will be loaded into the project code during runtime. And these are Jupyter source files which contain a combination of code, graphs, and outputs all in one place. So Jupyter source file allows users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for data science. This is synup.db file. This file is the database file used to store user information. And this is topic modeling Python main code file. Now copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer and copying it. Open Anaconda prompt. 
So now use the command cd followed by a space and paste the copied path and hit the enter button. So this command is used to change the current directory to the code folders path. Now use the command python space app.py to compile the app.py file and typing python space app.py and hit the enter button. So this command will execute the python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address local host and port unless configured differently. It will take some time. So this is the local host and this is the port. Now copy the local and provided by the framework. I'm copying it and paste it into any web browser. I prefer Chrome. After pasting it, hit the enter button. So the home page of the project has been displayed in the browser. This is the front end built using Flask framework. So here we can see a sign up link, click on it. So if you are new users, we have to register first. Fill in all these details and click on sign up button to register. And if we already have an account, we can directly log in by clicking on this link. So as I already have an account, I'm clicking on this link. Here we have to provide a credentials, username and password. and click on login button. So it has redirected us to the classification page. So here we can see your enter your message box where we have to enter a message and the application will classify it as either positive, negative or neutral sentiment. So I have entered this message. Now click on predict button. So this is the entered message and here we can see the classified label that is the tweet type is negative. So the application has classified this text as negative sentiment. And here we can see the topic for the paragraph is most dependent upon. So dependent upon these words, the application has classified this message as negative. Click on home link. We'll try again giving another text. I have entered this message. Now click on predict button. So we can see this is the entered message and here we can see the classification that is the tweet type is negative. And here we can see the words dependent upon which the application has classified this message as negative. Click on home link will try again. I have entered this message. Now click on predict button. So this is the given message and here we can see the classification that is the tweet type is positive. And these are the words dependent upon which the application has classified this message as positive. Click on home link. We'll give another message. I have entered the text, click on predict button. So this is the given text and here we can see the classification that is the tweet type is neutral. And here we can see the words dependent upon which this message has been classified as neutral. So similarly, we can give any message and can get the classifications as either neutral, positive or negative. Now click on sign out. So the conclusion here is the project successfully employed a variety of natural language processing and machine learning techniques, including text blob and weighted sentiment analysis alongside algorithms such as logistic regression, SVM, random forest, MLP, Naibase, XGBoost and KNN. This comprehensive approach provided nuanced insights into public sentiments on the monkeypox outbreak capturing the intricacies of language used in social media discussions. The utilization of both count vectorizer and TF-IDF vectorizer facilitated effective feature extraction, converting .x data into numerical format. This allowed for the training and evaluation of diverse classifiers, contributing to a thorough exploration of machine learning models performance in understanding and classifying sentiments expressed on Twitter.
the extension of the project to include a stacking classifier a hybrid model combining predictions from multiple individual models resulted in improved predictive accuracy this approach leverages the strengths of different classifiers enhancing the robustness of sentiment predictions and providing decision makers with more reliable insights into public perceptions during the monkeypox outbreak the integration of flask for a user friendly front end interface user testing and authentication along with latent directlet allocation that is lda for topic modeling ensured a seamless experience this facilitates informed decision making for government and health authorities in shaping effective public health policies beyond sentiment analysis the project significantly contributes to informing strategic health policies and mitigation strategies by comprehensively understanding public sentiments on social media decision makers gain valuable insights to formulate targeted evidence based health policies addressing concerns and countering potential misinformation during the monkeypox outbreak thank you for watching video for more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.